So now we want to take a look at the mechanisms of nucleophilic acyl substitution that are involved in the interconversion of the carboxylic acids and their derivatives. And there's three of them, which is kind of a pain in the butt. And the first one is the easiest, and the second one's not too bad. Uh, but the third one's going to kind of suck, I'll warn you. So, uh, but we'll start with the easiest ones. This one's with strong nucleophiles. And, and technically, it's with any nucleophile that has a negative charge, so anions. And in this case, uh, you simply just do the same pattern we saw with like Grignard's and hydride reagents. And the first step is simply nucleophilic attack. So, and we're going to form a tetrahedral intermediate here. So we've got the chlorine still attached. We've now got this oxygen out here, the negative charge, and then we've attached this group right here. And from here, our electrons that we kicked up to the oxygen are going to come right back down and just kick off the leaving group. And that is the whole mechanism. It's just two steps. So we've got nucleophilic attack followed by loss of a leaving group. Uh, and when you've got a, a nucleophile that is an anion, it is as simple as that. The second mechanism we're going to take a look at here is with weak nucleophiles. And technically, it's really for neutral molecules acting as the nucleophile, because some of those are actually moderate, not weak. And you know, but the vast majority are weak, so I'm going to kind of run with it here. But for neutral nucleophiles, uh, in this case, the mechanism is a little bit different. Uh, we're going to have an extra step just involving a proton transfer. Uh, we'll take a look. And one thing you should note, though, is that these are only possible for acid halides and anhydrides. So if you've got anything less reactive than either of those, uh, if you use a neutral nucleophile, you're going to need an acid catalyst as well. So uh, one other thing, and this is not really on the chart, it's not uh, possible to put everything on that lovely chart, uh, but it turns out pyridine here is required when you're doing uh, neutral nucleophiles with acid chlorides. So it turns out chloride is going to leave here and we're going to need somebody to deprotonate. And since chloride, if it deprotonated something, would turn into HCl, which is a strong acid, and dissociates completely in water, uh, it's not the best base uh, chloride. So in this case, we had pyridine to act as a base instead. Uh, so we'll kind of see how this plays out, but it's going to be similar uh, with one extra step along the way. So first step we are indeed going to do is nucleophilic attack. So if you notice now, though, with a neutral nucleophile, oxygen here makes two bonds. Normally, he already has two. So he's making a third bond, which is why we're going to have to deprotonate him later. So again, the chlorine is still bound. So and that oxygen is still bonded to the H and to the rest of the, of the carboxylic acid group as well. That leaves this oxygen with a positive formal charge. So and just like before, we are now going to kick these electrons right back down and kick off the leading group. And notice that oxygen still has a positive formal charge. So we're going to have to deprotonate him. We also formed a chloride ion here. So, and in this case, normally we'd think chloride ion is going to come deprotonate, whatever the leaving group was. But chloride's not a good base, being the conjugate base of a strong acid. And that's what pyridine's job is here. And so this is where pyridine comes in and deprotonates. Some people like to think that we're going to form HCl and the pyridine neutralizes that or something. and, and uh, shifts the equilibrium to the right, however you want to look at it, it's the same net result. This is probably the way it's actually happening here. And that's the whole reaction now. So instead of two steps, it's now three, one little proton transfer at the end. So now we'll move along to the third mechanism, and that's the acid catalyzed mechanism. And so we're going to use a neutral nucleophile, but with an acid catalyst. And again, for anything less reactive than the anhydrides, like the esters or the amides or carboxylic acids, uh, for neutral nucleophiles, they've got to have an acid catalyst. Uh, and in this case, this is the mechanism that kind of sucks. And, uh, it's six steps. It's going to be very reminiscent of what you saw with like imine formation and acetal formation uh, back in the ketone aldehyde chapter. But lots of proton transfers going on and stuff like that. Uh, and in this case, it turns out water is not a very good nucleophile and not strong enough to attack the carbonyl of an ester. So what you've got to do is first protonate the ester, similar to what we did with acid catal catalysis with ketones and aldehydes. So now that it's protonated, that carbonyl has a much greater partial positive charge, and now water's a strong enough nucleophile to come and attack. And so that's what's going to happen here. Water's going to come and attack, kick the pi electrons up to the oxygen. So leaving you with this lovely species here, and in this case, oxygen with three bonds and a positive charge is highly acidic, just like H3O+. And that's the next thing that's going to happen, is we're going to deprotonate it. And to do that, we're just going to invoke another water molecule right out of the solution.
And we also form some H3O plus here. Okay, so there's nothing particularly reactive at this stage. We've just got to kind of remember where we're going. Well, we want this methoxy group to leave, but right now he's not a good leaving group. But if we protonate him, he'd have a positive charge and he would be a good leaving group. And so that's what we're going to do in this next step here. So and to deprotonate, we use water. To protonate here, we've got H3O plus is our acid. And so we need a molecule of H3O plus here. All right, so now, oh, that's supposed to be a CH3 on one of those. Uh, let's just do that. So that's the methyl group out there. Uh, from here now, uh, we've got a good leaving group. Anytime you form a good leaving group, next step, you're going to have it leave. Uh, and often we just show one resonance structure here. So we'd often show like this. And technically, it doesn't really matter which of these OHs you use. So, but that'll take us back to having a double bond. So, and we've also got a molecule of methanol we've formed here. So, and from here, we're just one step away from having our carboxylic acid. So, product, and we already got the methanol product formed. And it's simply just another deprotonation. We'll just have another water molecule come in and do a proton transfer. Cool, and that means we also form a molecule of H3O plus here as well. So there's our catalyst getting regenerated right at the end. So if you look, this should ring a bell. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six steps. Another one of those six step mechanisms, uh, a nice running theme here. We'll do one more of these um, before we're done here, but all the nucleophilic acyl substitutions will follow one of these three mechanisms, depending on if you've got an anion as a nucleophile, a neutral molecule as a nucleophile, or a neutral molecule with acid catalysis. Uh, the only thing that's going to really dif be different is who's the leaving group and who are the nucleophiles, but the mechanisms are all going to be the same. Uh, but like I said, these acid catalyzed ones are a pain in the butt, and we will do one more uh, in a different context just to reiterate.